Hunter and welcome back. Uh, this is Ibrahim Qureshi here and today I have some great news. I have become VSFR 2021 this year. So this is the third year running I have become VSFR. Um, so let's get started with today's session. Today I'm going to discuss uh, further new topic which I want to involve uh, around uh, virtual um, appliance which is uh, VMware appliance or uh, any appliance for that matter. So this is going to be the first session for virtual appliance in module 3 and the second session will include uh, some more bits how to deploy an appliance. So in today's module we'll be looking into how to create your own appliance using a existing virtual machine. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ibrahim Qureshi. I'm a VMware V expert. Uh, I run a blog called agileops.co.uk. Do check it out and uh, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at the rate Ibrahim Qureshi. Uh, the spelling is over here, right down here. And uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for getting new updates. So let's get started. So the course content, as you all know, we are uh, in module 3 and we covered virtual machines templates and today we are going to look at appliances and we have one topic remaining which is clones which we'll be doing in doing very shortly so just as a fun I have put in uh, appliance like a like a washer dryer or washing machine over here but um, just to recap virtual machines we covered that what are, what are virtual machines I sh I'm sure you all know that we have covered templates in the last session uh, in the session last week, I covered what is template and how to customize the templates as well. So today we are going to look at how to deploy a virtual appliance. To be honest, today we are not actually going to look at how to deploy it, but we're looking, I'm going to take you through some steps so you'll understand it. So what is a uh, virtual appliance? Uh, it's a virtual machine, simple as that. It is basically a highly customized uh, virtual machine which can do a specific task. Can anyone guess an example which can be a virtual machine that does a specific task? The main virtual machine which we use to connect all the VMware administrators is our VMware vCenter uh, which is a VCSA which is basically a vCenter server appliance. vCenter server appliance vCSA. So it is also an appliance. Our appliance as I said is a machine which is highly customized to do a specific task. Now VMware basically customized this machine. It is built on Linux but obviously they have um, built their own version of Linux which is called Photon OS um, and that is uh, how they are running the appliances. There's no no more Windows uh, vCenter server from version 7. I hope you all uh, know that. Okay so let's get a little bit into how to export uh, a template or uh, a appliance really a VMware appliance so basically it is very close to the last topic which we discussed which is templates so in the previous topic we saw how to create a template and how to deploy a virtual machine from a template and how to customize it customize it as well now last time when we went there we went to templates and we went to convert to template right and then we use that now over here we are going to export it to OVF which is open virtualization format OVF template we call it but th this is basically going to make uh, an appliance now why would you want to make it so I'll give you a really nice example um, so it's quite easy to make one as you can see right click on the virtual machine you need to remember that you have to have the virtual machine powered off that's a prerequisite so as long as it's a power off virtual machine which is obviously this one here uh, nms hyphen test one uh, and you go to templates and then you can select export and then it will give you the files to download now i have covered a little bit here around creating a ovf or ov8 appliance a virtual machine or appliance which is um, so it's easy to create it's easy to migrate once you create an OVF appliance you can give it to anyone who needs it most of the organization who are, are doing uh, or offering some service instead of uh, you know giving the instructions how to install a particular application they what they're doing these days is they are installing it on the um, 
VM and making it an OVA or OVF and you can just import it in your virtual infrastructure and you don't need to go through you know uh, three hours of installation or customization and troubleshooting how to get it to work again so it can be highly customized and it can be exported and given to anyone and they can just import it in their environment and it's so easy to deploy we'll check that in the next session so in this session obviously we'll see some of these deployment now if you remember a virtual machine when we created a virtual machine i left this slide here to show you so we have a flat file which we call which is the vmdk file um, dot vmdk file here so that basically points to a flat file which is actually the os installation so when you export uh, OVF, it basically exports some configuration files. Um, sometimes it also exports the NV uh, RAM file, which is this one. Of course, the VMDK file and the flat file. And sometimes, you know, you can choose whether you want to have the same MAC address and stuff like that. Based on that, it will also export some of the config file along with the VMX files. So we'll check that in a minute. So let's get to our demo. Today I want to show you a quick glimpse of what I have been working in the last month or so. So I was creating a monitoring system for my virtual infrastructure. As you can see, I have quite a few VMs running here um, and obviously I want them to be monitored. So what I have done is um, I went ahead and I was looking for an open source tool which does the job and I found obviously nothing um else than nagios now nagios core is the addition which i'm running here uh, if you click on host you can see i have nms i have called it which is a um, network monitoring system in my head but obviously you can think of it as nagios monitoring system now Na nagios are also offering uh, nagios xi which is a virtual appliance uh, which is the topic we are discussing today now the only thing is the nagios xi is a paid version as opposed to Na nagios core which is a free version but um, to set it up it's a lot of hard work i spent around a week and a half just to you know understand the terminology how it works how it works with linux machines how it works with windows machines what are the um, like how we can install the uh, nrp agents how we can install the uh, and see you know there's a, a agent for uh, a windows as well so how how do you deploy that and all that and also i have ended up creating some of the shell uh, scripts for uh, you know sort of plugins for monitoring certain service services so on a tactical overview you can see instantly if you have any servers which are you know having alerts and if you have disabled those alerts um, now I have went um, on after just configuring this I have already set up email notifications which is really um, handy to have if I have a recent account on or a host account on I get an email notification on my phone and instantly I can see um, that a service has gone down now what we are going to do today is this is the services view so you can see um, our vCenter is here. It is monitoring the current load, which is okay. Uh, the users, um, the HTTP, which is the website, and it's checking for the ping, whether the SSH is open, and so on and so forth. Now, I haven't um, started looking at how to monitor the virtual infrastructure, which is like the data stores, the VMs running on it, the workload on that. That's not yet done yet. But obviously, I have got uh, my three hosts here. Now, as an example, I'm going to use this host. If you look at it, it is pointing to an IP which is 10.10.10.21, which is a nested ESX server. If I turn it, uh, turn it off, it will basically notify me. Now, I also have Windows servers here, which are configured. Now, because this is a test environment, I didn't basically point it to this server. But if you install the agent and point it to the Nagio server IP, and you have to set up a secret password, um, then basically it starts collecting all the data of the explorer the c c drive and d drive if you have one so basically that's uh, how simple it is so at the moment what we are doing is we are just seeing the uptime on this server um, so it was quite hard work as i said i spent a couple of weeks doing this so we are going to basically export this server and i can have it 
you know deployed on a different environment maybe within my own lab okay rather than migrating it so let's do that before that for the quick demo whether i get notifications this is the server which i was talking about it's a nested esx host um, as you can see here let's cancel i think this connected it seems but basically what we are going to do is we are going to reboot this server quickly and i will be getting some notifications so let's shut down and once it's shut down we will see nagios alerting for that particular so this is the host as you can see here just cautious of the time i know obviously you wanted to see the uh, um, demo but um, this is a good experiment of you know the work which uh, is valuable from a monitoring tool point of view so soon you'll see that this particular server will start alerting so far we didn't get any alerts So the way Nagios does it, it has notifications and it starts basically sending notifications and events as soon as it picks it. So there you go, we can start seeing that ESX6 is soft down. So that's the first alert it has encountered. Now it has to see a couple of these. So soft down and then uh, you get another soft down and finally you get a you know alert saying it's hard down that means it's unreachable completely that's when you um, you get an email notification and if you are using an iPhone or Android phone you can set up a ringtone on it uh, to ring and call you out if you are basically you want to use Nagios as a <coughs> primary monitoring tool for your call outs as well so let's go back in and see whether it has picked up yep there you go it has picked up and it's saying it's down so that's how easy it is and when we go to services it's also picked up that it's critically down so ssh is down now and it's basically going to see that it's completely down in a minute and then it will start sending alerts it's a good tool but it does take a lot of time to understand it and to be able to uh, use it so this is why this is a prime example of using um, obviously this VM as an appliance and then you can deploy it somewhere else if you have configured this for um, your email alerts then you should start seeing the alerts now pretty soon so so what we are going to do is we are going to now start powering off this server and then we'll create an appliance now for ease of use what i have done is um, i have created a copy of the same server and i have left it powered off here which is basically doing the same job so what we are going to do is select that server couple of checks which we can do before we create an appliance is basically go to data store and select the data store and then go to VMs and basically see the size of your appliance before you uh, export it. So NMS test 01, which is the copy of NMS 01 anyway. Um, it's 3.67 gig as you can see. Okay, so that's quite big anyway, but that is what you're uh, going for. But you need to bear in mind this is provision space is 100 gig. If you do not export this as an appliance uh, then what will happen if you try to download this VMDK it will try to download and copy all 100 gig uh, in reality it's only having 3.67 gig data so it is always better to export it as an appliance so it's very compact and then you can uh, easily migrate it wherever you want and redeploy it again so in the next session be sure to check out we'll be redeploying this particular appliance now right click i haven't heard that 
uh, notification yet but you're going to keep an eye on that soon you might get it so so this is how we do it so if we <clears throat> click on the vm again as i said the free requirement is it has to be powered off right click on it and then go to templates and then export ods template and over here you can select some advanced options and include what we need so i would say include extra configuration maybe i would not include the mac address or the U bios uuids not a good idea to do anyway so that's it and as long as you have these selected it will include the nvram file and stuff like that which it needs um then all you do is click on okay and you'll see these pops pop-ups coming in for each one of the file it will open a pop-up so there you go that's the first nms file it is asking to download so let's create a folder here so we are actually leave it at desktop i would say and i will say mgios magios those are the notifications i'm getting and then save that's one vmdk going saved and then again go to desktop magios and then save that's the other vmd uh, the ovf file is that one second one which was the ovf file now we have the another one desktop Magios and then save so it, it's asking for a foot file which is dot and f file you can see we already have the vmdk file the nvram file and the uvf file so this is the foot file which is probably having some configuration we'll be saving that so we get all the files here and there you go the export is complete it's only three gigs so it's not a big deal so we can probably open this and see all the four files here so stay tuned for the next session where i will be uh, importing these files uh, in uh, probably different environment so we can see um, what i might do is um, might actually import it in a different data center completely um, and then over here I have a couple of data centers so maybe we'll be importing it in the data center here in london because we exported it from this data center here so we might actually import it in a different data center and see i'll show you how easy it is to just get it running again um, obviously if it's imported in a different data center all the configuration files are specific to each server which i have so uh, based on that environment we need to just configure those uh, you know parameters and point them to the right servers and then we, we can go green again so just last glimpse of the environment so we can see the events now that the server is hard down and you can see the email notifications been sent to sent for this esx3 here and then the second one sent to me ibrahim and then another email sent here so if we go to notifications now there you go the you can see the email notifications which has been sent if we click on that it doesn't go anywhere okay that's fine <laughs> but yeah that basically explains you that it basically um, is a really cool tool which you can use um, so yeah that's pretty much it guys so hope you like this session don't forget to uh, like hit the notification bell and subscribe to my channel cheers bye <laughs>